gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's your boy, the nonprofit sector connector, coming at you from the top of my house, two flights up from the kitchen, where I get my coffee sometimes. Other times, you know, I get it at Duncan. Tommy D runs on Duncan. This is philanthropy in focus. And what do I focus on this show? I focus on bringing you all nonprofit leaders and their organizations, nonprofits, as I tell you every week, change our world, make incredible impacts, and serve those who need services. If it wasn't for the nonprofits, the leaders and their teams that I specialize in hanging out with, I specialize in hanging out with people. I like that, Tommy D. If it wasn't for these leaders, I mean, I was on a phone call with a, a gentleman who runs development for an organization out here in Long Island just earlier this morning. I had a roundtable with my friend uh, Lauren Marzo over at the Viscardi Center. Yesterday, we had about 25 other nonprofit folks on that call, learning from Lauren. I'm all about this sector. So what do I specialize in? I do two things on this show. I help the leaders who come on my show tell their story, and then I help them amplify their message. I sound like that guy, you know, uh, they used to sell the electronics, Crazy Eddie. Insane. My prices are, he used to say, here's the story, what we're going to talk about. I want you to understand that there are organizations, as I say, that change our world, that make incredible impact. And every time I have a leader on this show, I know that they're going to say, hey, it's not about me. It's about my team. And that's exactly right. But it takes a strong leader at the beginning of the or at the top of the organization to really set that North Star and then work towards those goals together as a unit. Juliet Douglas, my friend over at Venture House, she is the CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Venture House. I will tell everybody how we met and the whole thing, but good morning. How are you? What's going on? Good morning. I'm well. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. We're going to have fun. I promise we're going to have a good time. I'm going to, I shall do my best. I've done this 102 times so far. So I think I'm going to, I think I figured out some stuff. So I really, I, you know, before we get started, there's something I want to read and just to kind of set the stage a little bit. Um, you know, I, I do. Uh, I take very seriously the conversation around mental health. And I, I, I know, you know, every pretty much it comes up in every conversation I'm having with nonprofits these days because it is uh, it is certainly so important. Um, I believe that. Uh, Unfortunately, the way we've treated this mental health conversation, uh, wrapping so much stigma into the conversation is not appropriate, and we need to continue to break down those boundaries. Second ever episode, you might not know this, Juliet, but the second ever episode of Philanthropy and Focus, Dr. Larry Grubler came on the show from Transitional Services for New York, TSI, and why they serve 4,000 um, individuals with different mental health issues in the city of New York and each year. And, you know, Larry said, you know, Tommy, at t different times, we all need support. And I think that's the compassion, the conversation we need to have is we all need support at different times. You know, I go through this in my own family unit about different challenges that people are going through. Uh, but there's a spectrum of different needs for people, for sure. And we need to open up this conversation. We need to have this dialogue more often. So what we're going to talk about, so Venture House is a clubhouse setting. And there are more than, there are over 320 local clubhouses internationally and and this way this model offers friendship employment housing at times education access to medical and psychiatric services in in an environment of what i would consider community and collaboration having been both now certainly on the campus of uh or the clubhouse in queens new york but also in the last couple of weeks i i made it out to uh staten island a couple of weeks back and i met with juliet and liz and Fikeni and some of the folks over there and I, I I just wanted to kind of set the stage, and then I really want to get into, Juliet, you, your background, the organization, as we talk about it, and the impact. Always on the show, we draw things to how can we connect and how can we bring resources to the organization, but it's important that we set that stage in doing so up front. So one last thing I want to say, and then we get into this. My buddy, Brendan Levy, over at the Queens Chamber of Commerce, who runs business development, was originally the conduit, the liaison, the connector, if you will. Yes, I will, Tommy. Okay, good, Tommy. If you will, Brendan Levy, my uncle Brendan over at the chamber, made this connection years ago to Juliet and her team uh, at Venture House. And we know each other also because through that relationship from Brendan, Venture House became a client of our firm, uh, Vanguard Benefits, probably about five or six years ago now. Um, so that's, we'll leave that on the side, but that is what I do professionally. We own a benefits agency focused on serving businesses and specifically the nonprofit sector. Okay, commercial gone. Let's do it. Juliet, welcome to the show. 
Welcome to my virtual attic. You're not in the attic. You're in your office. I'm in my attic. Some people who might only be listening don't realize that we're not in the same place. But I just want to get the uh, kind of get the story. I know you you got your MSW, your master's in social work for, from Columbia University. We were just talking a little bit before in the virtual green room about the kind of the arc a little bit about what drew you, not maybe necessarily to the mental health space or, or nonprofit, but just to, just this, this social work aspect. Tell me a little bit about that. What was interesting for you there? So thank you for, for introducing me and um, it's great to be here. Well, when I think back on why did I choose social work or the, this profession, um, it really just boils down to my thinking that uh, people, are the most interesting uh, thing in the world. Um, you know, I, I think that when I come to the end of my life and I, I ask myself what really mattered, it's, it's, I don't think I'm gonna be thinking about that, you know, very comfortable couch I bought or that, you know, treasured piece of jewelry. I'm gonna be thinking about, you know, the meaningful relationships that I've had in my life. And so it's really about relationships. People matter. And, uh, you know, that's what drew me to the field in, to begin with. Yeah, I, I certainly, uh, in my experience, the most fascinating species I've ever encountered is our species. <laughs> you know, I mean, we are, we are an interesting lot. Although we're quite flawed Ooh. as a species. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Um, well, what do you mean by that? Flawed. Well, we're, we're at war. Oh, well. As long as human species has existed, well, we've been killing each other. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of feelings on that whole thing, but that's a, we'll, we'll fill three hours of a show with that, that whole concept about how things are set at odds. You know, I think there's almost by design by some folks you kind of need it that way. Um, but that's a whole nother story. So I, I, I want to understand, you know, having been in Queens or at the Queens location, which I tell you the truth, we were talking about this a few weeks ago. I haven't been out to the Queens location as they say, pre COVID, um, we used to come out each year, you know, during uh, open enrollment time on the benefit side of things, but it's been some years. Uh, you've done some renovations out of the building, but it's tell me about that space. I mean, it's it's a really cool building. It's like a landmark building. I want to talk to you about the art. We're going to get into that because that's going to lead into a whole nother conversation, which I know we have to talk about. If you're not watching, if you're only listening right now, um, Julia has some incredible artwork on the walls behind her. But I, let's tell me, we'll get into that in a second. Tell me about the building and some of the the amenities and and really the facilities and resources and things like that that members get the experience when they come to Venture House. So it, Venture House is a clubhouse, which is a particular model. And as you pointed out, there are over 300 around the world. There are over 200 in the United States. And the model did begin in New York City. Mm -hmm. so the clubhouse is a, um, it's a facility where people, work together side by side to run day-to-day -day operations. So um, in order to become a member of the club, a person has to be um, 18 years or older and have a diagnosis of a serious mental health condition. So schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depression. And when a person becomes a member, they do work side by side with staff to manage the facility to engage in program planning and development, um, to participate in uh, designing our social programming and uh, conducting various events and advocacy. Uh, so we, so the, the clubhouse is structured into work units. There's units devoted to um, education and employment. So when people are interested in uh, pursuing uh, further education or finding a job or returning to school, maybe after having dropped out at one point due to mental health challenges. Um, there are people who are trying to get a GED or apply to college. Um, and so they go into that unit. And again, it's staff and members working side by side to run those day-to-day -day operations. So we have members who may have a PhD and they are tutoring other members who are working on their GED. So, um, and then there's a unit devoted to the kitchen, dining room, uh, where we operate uh, sort of like a restaurant. Yep. We plan the menu, we're cooking side by side, people are learning how to, you know, ma maintain inventory, 
uh, do the cooking, serving, uh, fussing tables, cleaning up. And so there's a lot of work associated with that unit. And we have a unit that is involved with the uh, clerical aspect of uh, the operation, which is you know, logging in attendance, uh, tracking data, uh, scheduling tours, doing the admissions process for uh, incoming members. Uh, that unit publishes a newsletter. Um, we're going to be you know, working on other uh, you know, in our future, which we can talk more about later. Mm -hmm. so, so when P and then we had a whole social program. So the, the clubhouses, the, the model is structured around what we call the work order day. W work, work order day. Okay. The concept is we're running a business here, we're coming together and we're focused on work. And it's really work because you know, the, the principle is that um, you know, the concept is rooted in this notion that work is restorative. That when people are engaged in purposeful activity, um, that, that is a meaningful experience. Um, and, there, and people are, we, we communicate to our membership that they are needed, wanted, and expected. So let me stop you for a second, because we had, you know, uh, when, when, we, when I was in Staten Island um, with you and Liz, we sat and, you know, had some coffee and stuff like that. And you just said needed um, and expected. And what was the last one? Wanted. Wanted. So needed, expected, and wanted. And uh, whether somebody has a serious mental health challenge issue or not, uh, we all want to be needed, wanted, right? That's what we want. We want connection. You know, when you think in terms of, you know, I've shared on this show plenty of times, I'll just share it again right now. I gave up drinking alcohol 12 years ago. Um, and I, and not that, you know, this was necessarily uh, something that I was aware of at the time, but I learn about the addiction piece in life is, you know, as I see more and more and read more and more, connection reduces you know, that need for the, the, the drug, the substance. And a lot of, I think what, you know, at least in my experience with people is trying to fill that hole of loneliness and lack of connection, um, you know, from a, from a substance abuse perspective. And I think when you talk about being wanted um, and, and needed and expected, there comes also, you know, aside from connection, there comes this level of responsibility. I'm part of a team, right? You had mentioned there was, you know, um, I don't need to call out anybody by name or anything, but you mentioned it was a member that, you know, very specifically, he has a routine of how he comes and takes care of the trash. And that's his thing. And that's his routine. And, you know, it's it, it's it's something that, you know, he's committed to and it's part of what, you know, and sure, there's plenty of different responsibilities that people have that they go, this is my thing. I'm part of a community here, you know, and, and I, I made kind of a you know, a video leading up to the show. And I was kind of being a little bit silly because I showed up, I had come from a different meeting and I had a shirt and tie and a, and a suit on. And I stuck out, as they say, like a sore thumb uh, at, at, at Venture House out in Staten Island. And people go, who's the guy in the suit? Who's the guy in the suit? I tell that story only to say, I'll never do that again. I'll always have a hoodie <laughs> and jeans on when I come out now. But it's be I say that because Everybody's working in community at Venture House. Every, you, I, you know, this is something you've shared with me over the years. Somebody who might come in for a visit doesn't know who's staff and doesn't know who's a member because everybody's just working in tandem to get certain things done and, and be responsible. So I know from a vocational perspective, maybe we could dive into that when we come back from a break, but all of us get a uh, connection a, a, a feeling of success when we have a vocation when we have a profession when we have a job and you know uh, because it gives us somewhere to go and something to do so can you say anything about that before we go to a quick break yes absolutely a club in order for a clubhouse to be accredited and we are accredited by clubhouse international we have to adhere to 37 standards and it's our constitution in effect so uh one of the standards speaks to makes the point that uh, the clubhouse employs so few staff that we cannot operate without the participation of the membership. That's one of the standards. The point is we're so skinny on staff that if people who are members are not pulling their weight, the thing doesn't work. Exactly, which wow. means that our members are not only welcome, they're essential. And, and being essential is part of what drives uh, self-esteem, uh, 
it builds confidence, and that's where the recovery lies. I love that. I love that. That is so special. I want to come back and I want to dive in, if we could, to each of these different programs um, a little bit more in depth from, you know, vocational, the work units, what what a day in the life at, at a clubhouse is, um, and and really how some of some lives have been changed by the relationship with Venture House, being uh, being exposed to job training, being exposed to just what you said, you know, um, you, you know, although an, in, an individual may have, um, as you say it, um, to give me the term the way you said it again, serious mental health crisis. Uh, so under the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, it's sort of the encyclopedia of mental yep. health uh, conditions. SMI uh, stands for serious mental illness. Got it. All and right. It includes four basic diagnoses. Because everyone has something. We all got something. You know? Look, I wasn't going to say it on the show. I wasn't going to say it today because I didn't want to be, you know, whatever. But, like, I don't believe the statistics when they say one in five people or one in four people. Because I usually say that in this home where I am, we're six for six with some level of mental health challenges. And I don't even, I say that kind of tongue in cheek, but I say it for real because we're all sort of going through. And that goes to what I started the show with Larry Grubler. As I said earlier, we all need different support. We need different levels of support. But with those with those serious mental illnesses that you talk about, um, you know, that doesn't preclude somebody from being a PhD, as you just said earlier. So it doesn't mean, you know, it because, you know, when I, we got to go to a break, but the point of the matter is um, with support, um, I, I guess with pharmaceutical intervention as appropriate, certainly with psychiatric uh, services and things like that, people can can certainly excel in different ways, right? With with support. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Philanthropy and focus. We got a lot to talk about. Juliet Douglas, Chief Executive Officer of Venture House, is here, and your boy, the nonprofit sector connector. Right back. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Tommy in his attic. That's right. Don't literally show up at my house. Don't join me in the attic like that. But join me in the attic every single Friday morning at 10 a.m. for the show. Come on, Tommy D. You can speak. Say the words, kid. So join me in the attic because I am having important conversations each week with nonprofit executive leaders on my show, Philanthropy. And focus today is not any different. So I want to read you something really quick. Venture House is a community-based nonprofit mental health agency that provides free and lifelong services to individuals in New York City with serious mental illness. Venture House utilizes an internationally recognized approach 
to psychosocial rehabilitation known as the clubhouse model, which was originated in New York City and has since been replicated in 33 countries. There you go, New York City, representing all around the world now. And we assist it, we assist people in sustaining recovery through improved access to, as I said earlier in segment one, education, employment, housing, socialization, and civic engagement. We talk about being that the members of a clubhouse are essential to what goes on in the clubhouse. In fact, by definition, the clubhouse cannot exist and do the work it's doing if the members aren't part of it, which what a better model than forcing the thing to work because it has to work. So, right, Juliet Douglas is here. I want to just shout out a couple things about the organization. So two, um, two psychosocial clubhouses in Queens, one in Queens, rather one in Staten Island, so two in New York City, as well as two scattered site supportive housing programs across New York City. I don't know what that means, which is good that Juliet is here and she does know what that means. So she could tell me what that means in a second. Um, we'll stop right there. Let's get back into our conversation. The website is venturehouse.org. Correct me if I'm wrong, venturehouse.org. Yeah. And my buddy Mick Collins has also shared it out there on um, on Facebook. So uh, if you are, I see people watching on Facebook. If you're there watching on Facebook and you have questions for Juliet or I, put it right there in the Facebook chat and we will answer those questions for you live on the show. Uh, so Juliet, so let's get into what the, the settings are because you have these multiple settings. In fact, when I first met you, I'm going to slow down. When I first met you in the organization, there was only Queens at the time. Yes. Right? Yes, that's so, right. Yeah, so take me through kind of what... The, the multiple sites, what is a scattered site support housing program? What is all that? So talk to us about that. Okay, so that is the that is through a contract with the State Office of Mental Health. Um, scattered site is means that we are housing people across the city in open market apartments uh, that are independent, like like anyone would be looking for. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is distinguished from having congregate settings where you have one building with multiple apartments in it and we are housing everyone together. Okay. You know, the, the, uh, so there are different levels of care in supportive housing. Um, but before we get to that, if you don't mind, before the break, we were talking right. about language, SMI, and I wanted to make the point that, sure. um, you know, in our, you know, raised consciousness, um, people have, you know, come to understand that language, uh, it can be stigmatizing and words have power. Yeah. And we've been reorienting our thinking about mental illness. And so we talk about it um, in, in different ways, such as we talk about mental health conditions, mental health concerns, mental health challenges, um, you know, and, and taking out that stigmatizing concept of illness. Because as you pointed out earlier, you know, we all got something. Yeah. And just, there is a, a spectrum of, of ways that people can feel and think. And um, we're all human. And so, and the clubhouse makes a point of that, of, of you know, recognizing every individual, every, every individual's dignity. Um, but so getting to the housing program, uh, we, you know, the, pro, the clubhouse wants to make sure that people have a holistic approach yeah. to recovery, which it has to include housing, employment, healthcare, all of those areas. So as can a I, club, can, I, can I stop you one second, just to go back for a second, um, understanding a, a holistic perspective and a holistic view of this, can, can we look at this from a perspective of when someone first a new member engages and maybe see the the kind of that that life cycle as they get exposed to the different services like even from the i don't know if this is the right term but from intake or from first connection or first point of introduction so because i see things in terms of like i like to see like a vision of what ha like what happens what's that that experience like can we do that and then look at it from the perspective of that holistic view um and how the person initially interacts with the organization and vice versa? Yeah, yeah, that is actually, that's a great um, question. And cool. Eric, yeah, because what, you know, I started out in the, um, the treatment side of sure. mental health services. You know, it was um, hospital-based, it was the medical model. 
psychiatrist had the final word on things. We, we, we were teaching, um, you know, social workers, therapists, psychologists, we're, we're helping people develop coping strategies. And um, so it was, it was clinically focused and, um, and it helped people to stabilize, to get, you know, to be able to manage symptoms. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all good. It's excellent. It's necessary. And right. so medications can be very effective for those for whom it works. For others, it, it, it may not be so good. I mean, the medications have both, you know, um, you know, positives and negatives mm -hmm. something up in order to, you know, to add something on. Right. So, uh, so I was always, you know, I was in the treatment side of things. And then people would come in, you know, very uh, unwell, unable to, to manage, to function. And then after a certain period of treatment, they would feel stable and, um, and more comfortable and grounded. And then the question is, well, what next? Right. What next? And I think, you know, the answer to that is, is a clubhouse. It's, Got it. It provides community. It provides fellowship, lasting, meaningful relationships, a place that uh, invites you to contribute in meaningful ways and to have a purpose. Yeah. And so, um, so when somebody comes in to the clubhouse as a, it, we sometimes have to reorient their thinking. These mm -hmm. are folks who may have been institutionalized for many years. These are people who um, nobody asks what you're thinking. You know, they come into the clubhouse. And they're sitting around the table with us making policy. We're, right. We have to make a smoking policy because people are complaining about the smoke at the front door. Sure. So okay, let's have a community meeting. And what do you think? And what do you think? And it can be a startling experience for people who have been marginalized. Because you know, they haven't, because, the, because again, as I'm understanding what you're saying is in their experience, their, their opinion, they've not been invited to have that type of dialogue. So even that is a new orientation or a reorientation, as you might say, to get them back, you know, get an individual person back to uh, to a, a, some level ground where they understand what, you know, what this is, right? Yes. I mean, it's, it's really about agency. Really agency. Agency. People who have been in hospitals for years or other institutions or treatment programs are being told, what to do, when to do it. Now you sleep, now you eat, now you take your medication. Mm. Now you, I'm the, you know, the authority, the, the clinic, the practitioner is the authority and you are the patient, the recipient. Right. So Clubhouse model wants to reorient thinking around that. We, everybody is there, can be their own agent. Everyone can contribute. They certainly can think. They have ideas. And, um, we see people come into the clubhouse who might not, who might, you know, when you join a club, any one of us, mm -hmm. if we ever join a social club, I hear this from people who, who try to, you know, to start out in, in some new environment where people are already active, already have relationships. It's hard to break into that. Sure. So we might have someone join the club and they're sitting in the margins for the first while and we're asking them to participate, but they're reticent, let's say. Yeah. Uh, and and they're they're nervous, they're anxious, they don't want to, you know, feel like they, they they might ask a stupid question or whatever. So they but then after a period of time, they might bring that chair and sit closer to the table. Mm. After some other period of time, they may start to contribute to the conversation. And then they start to feel their um power there. And and then they start to bring things to other people and you know, help other people to engage. And so we see this happening incrementally, um, but it's a very uh, striking experience when you see someone who never said a word for six months, who's suddenly, you know, uh, bringing up ideas and making, you know, planning with us. How, I, I really, I'm going to ask this question, we'll start it and then we'll take a break, but how, um, what sort of strategies during the initial phases when somebody just joins the club and becomes a member of the clubhouse, um, to understand their personal interests. You know, I mean, I know we're going to talk about something. I'm just going to wink at the whole world. Let's go Mets. We're going to talk about the Mets in a little while. But um, shout out to my buddy, Mick Collins, big, big Mets fan. Let's go Mets. So, um, you know, I think uh, I think my question is like, how do we find out people's interests early on? You know, is there like, 
Uh, do they have, you know, I, I, I don't know the terminology, but a, a coordinator, a, a case manager, somebody that's, t tell us about a little bit about that quick, if you could. There's actually, I'll try to speak. There, that's all right. I'm gonna, we're going to break anyway and come back and keep talking about it, but just like set the stage a little bit. Let's, why don't we tease? Why don't we tease a little bit? Tell, start the story and then I'll st say we got to go to break. Well, there is a formal process for that. We, okay. we talk about, we call it a service plan. Okay. The, the newcomer in a conversation about what are their goals, what are their strengths, what are their areas that they want to grow in. You know, so what, you know what? I want to hear all about that service plan, but we got to go to a quick break. We'll be right back. This is Philanthropy in Focus. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. And we are back we're back we're back all right listen we're back juliet douglas is here i gotta say hello to my friend um another friend of mine fred taffer who's actually going to be on, a, on my other show this afternoon the in focus now on profit show fred's checking in on facebook too i was joking with everybody mick collins is a big yankee fan but i like to give him the business and say like let's go mets and the whole thing he's actually named mickey mantle that's his name his given name it is uh so this is that's the, what the guy's called so um he's a yankee fan i know fred and congrats fred good luck on the uh the eagles this weekend you know we uh the giants are no longer playing football right now but i believe they'll be back playing football um next year again so we'll wor we'll worry about that but um let's i want to get into that service plan juliet and then i know you have somebody in your office with you that we'd like to maybe introduce and bring into this conversation as well so we can get to that during this segment uh wait here let me lay out the rest of the show so i want you to talk about the service plan uh, we'll introduce your colleague who's in the office there with you. And then when we come back from our other break, I want to talk about, you know, things you have going on, the events that we have coming up and, and things like that, that we kind of prepped on. And obviously the pictures behind you would lead into that story. So I just, we, this is uh, just totally framing out where we're going. So service plan, I, I, maybe it's me, I become a member of the club. And what is that? process look like what are the questions you're asking what are you trying to find out about me my interests? how and and is there a situation where you might want to go oh based on you know your interests or your experience you might want to be friends with connected with right um a mentor if there's such a, I'm, i don't know if that's the right word but something like that let's talk about that i just want to set it up but those are my curiosities on this one Okay, so it, it, this is a great area. Uh, we, when somebody joins the club, we um, we let them live for thirty days or so. You know, experience all the different work units, circulate around the building, make acquaintances with you know members and other staff, and then at some point, they are um, invited to choose who they would like to be there. Now, this is this the, the title of this role has been 
a subject of discussion in the clubhouse world for a very long time because okay. we have used to be called a staff generalist. Um, but recently, um, the, the the title has become you know is changed to um, so one of the options is social practitioner which came out of Fountain House. Fountain House is the original clubhouse where it all began in the 1940s, mm -hmm. which is another st story of interest. Yep. But yep. so the social practitioner in other settings, you call it, you know, the, the, the therapist or the, the clinical, you know, staff. So in other uh, settings, a, a person is assigned to someone, uh -huh. therapist, and here's your doctor. And the person has no choice in that. Uh, but in the clubhouse, the, the individual makes a choice by check, discovering, you know, who is it that they feel they can connect with? Yeah. Who they feel they can, you know, that could make it good, uh, they could relate to. Sure. And they choose that person. And then that person, the staff, becomes their social practitioner. Well, what a great, just, just flipping, you know, conventional ways of doing things on, the, on its ear, as they say, right? It just makes sense. Like that, wouldn't it be better to... Uh, work your way through the organization to find out who you best because you're there to, to, to have a relationship. But I think it's totally on brand, obviously, from a perspective of clubhouse slash community setting. It just, it's obviously this makes sense. You know, whatever you call that social practitioner, uh, staff generalist, however you call it, I think the idea is that as a new member gets to navigate their way through and see where they're going to have their best uh, relationship and then therefore their best experience for success, right? Yeah. And so when they choose that person to be their social practitioner, they sit down together and that's when they explore this person's goals, interests, strengths, and so forth. And then they decide, well, what would you like to accomplish in the next six months or in the next year? You know, and how can we help you do that? If somebody says, you know, the cornerstone of the of the model, it does center on employment. Yeah. And um, we do, you know, we, people who want to get a job are invited to look into doing a job search, writing a resume, practicing interviewing skills, um, and their practitioner can help them to do that. Uh, that being said, uh, the clubhouse, you know, we ranges from 18 years old to 118. And so there are people who are no longer want to be in the job market and that's okay too. Sure. People come to the clubhouse and use it for how, you know, whatever sense for them in their particular you know, life circumstance. Is there a certain amount of, um, I don't know if I'm asking this the right way, uh, as a member, you know, is there a certain number of hours they need to be come through throughout the week and things like that to continue membership in good standing or something like that? Uh, actually, another beautiful aspect of the clubhouse structure is that um, membership, first of all, is for life standard number one of the 37 standards makes the point that membership is voluntary and without time limits. So once a person becomes a member of the club, which by the way, there's no out of pocket expense for that, mm -hmm. you are a member for life. And you, and like a gym membership, you can come and go as you please. You can come every day, once a week, twice a week, once a month, every you know other year, you can disappear for three years and come back, you're still a member. You don't discharge anybody. There's no reapplication process. Uh, so it really provides a support. You know, people's need for support will ebb and flow throughout their life. Sometimes they need more or less support. Um, so, but the, but it's a place where people know is a safe haven and that they and is available to them until the day they die. So that's incredible. I, I just can't imagine, you know, the, the friendships that people make, to, you know, through this. I, I mean, I can't imagine. I shouldn't say I can't. I, I, I think it's just a, such a blessing and a boon to folks. Um, what I, I know we wanted to share and get somebody who experiences the clubhouse setting uh, in, into this conversation. I don't know if we're ready to do that or did you have some additional things? Yes. Yeah. Uh yeah, we can do that now. I could go on endlessly, but I... <laughs> uh, well, me too. That's why we have to have a start and finish to this show, because it would never end. I would just keep talking and talking and talking. All right, let's go. Um, so let's bring Janet. So you're going to roll your chair away, and Janet's going to roll her chair towards the microphone, right? This let's is, do that. Hey, cool. This is Janet Parisa. Hey, Janet Parisa. We will, we're going to wait till Janet gets in range of the mic. Janet, can you hear Tommy D? Yes. How are you, Tommy? I'm doing great. Good to meet you. We saw, we saw each other real quick before we got started this morning, but I'm glad you're here. So 
I think it'd be cool to talk about, you know, your own experience as much or as little as you want to from a perspective of, of your experience and when you first connected with Venture House and, and the work you've been able to accomplish. And tell us a little bit about the a day in the life, a year in the life, whatever you want to tell us. Sure. Uh, I was first introduced to Venture House, uh, I believe it was eight, maybe going on nine years ago. We, uh, two of the staff uh, had come to a, a program I was, I was attending. It was a six week program. Um, and I was not feeling well engaged in this program as in several that I've gone through. And before I continue, I just want to um, express what the experience of being in the mental health system is like. I liken it to being on a hamster wheel, mm -hmm. going to an in inpatient program, then a partial program, then an outpatient program. And then once you complete these programs, where do you go? Mm. Where do you go? Yeah. So it becomes a cycle, you know, throughout uh, the lives of both myself and the people in the mental health community and mental health system. So when um, one of the staff workers came in to give a presentation and, you know, what Clubhouse was, what Venture House was. Yeah. Um, I remember running out when she was out the door going, you know, to her car. I chased her out there. I was like, Miss, Miss, um, can I have your card? Um, can you know, can I because I felt so desperate. And like, there's something about it that sorry to interrupt you. What 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 drew you to the model? Like what what was it that you heard that you seemed supportive and would bring you what you were looking for, what you needed? Well, number one, what caught me was uh, the um, worker. She's one of the social practitioners. Uh, Her energy. And uh, I find this with all of the staff here. And just uh, explaining housing. We help people with um, employment. But the one thing that drew me was is choice. Yeah. And Sure House gives us choice, like Juliet was explaining. We can come in one day, two days. We can use the clubhouse as we want. And it's a lifetime membership. A lot of these programs I was explaining have, you know, these like, you know, short lifespans. So it's like, you know, after six weeks, six months, you're on your own. And then where do you go? And Clubhouse is one of, you know, mental health, you know, best kept secrets, which we're hoping to, you know, and with your help, um, kind of spread the word. So uh, a lot of the people in the mental health system do have a place to go. Well, I, I want to, I don't like when things are a great secret because most of the times when they're the best kept secret, they didn't want to be a secret, right? So like it's it's conversations like this that that hopefully um, will continue to, to show. I mean, what what something that uh, Juliet had written down that, you know, when we said, what is the topic of conversation that people will learn about this show that, and she wrote clubhouses are a solution to the mental health crisis. So you've seen it in your own experience, but obviously, you know, with, with relationships over eight or nine years, you've probably seen some great successes. Do you want to talk to me about some of the success you've had or some of your colleagues and peers? Yes. Um, Clubhouse or Venture House, we are more strengths-based rather than we don't focus on our illness. We're, we're more strengths-based. Uh, coming into Venture House, I didn't have any friends, any social life, which, you know, people need people. We can't live without each other. We can't even die without each other. We need each other. So uh, my intention was just to get out of the house and make friends. And it didn't take me too long to do that. Uh, one of the things that drew me or kind of got me into my uh, groove was the work order day. Yeah. So uh, participating in what's going on in the clubhouse. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I started cleaning the bathrooms. Okay. Little things like that, a little bit of uh, computer work. And then as time went on, I became very active. I was very proactive in the employment and education unit. Uh, and uh, there I began, um, you know, to help members. I you know, my back, I have a background in writing. I would, you know, I'm assisting with tutoring, you know, people, you know, members looking forward to going to their GED. That's awesome. And uh, my only, I also, um, you know, I, I received my GED as a, you know, younger person. I couldn't, you know, the socialization, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, you know, a lot of the members are like, oh, you have a college degree, you were able to do this? I was like, yeah, you know, and then that kind of motivates me. Oh, Janet can do it, you know, hey, why not myself? Oh my God. But as time went on, I was uh, asked to, because we have a board of directors, and one of the best things um, that Venture House does is members are allowed to join this board. Member, it's mandatory. We have members on the board of directors. So there's an application uh, process. And then I was very excited to um, learn that I was accepted on the board. Oh Congratulations. What a, I mean, a game changer for you. I, I can't hug you because we're not in the same room, but I'm so fired up for you and what you're accomplishing. And, and what a thoughtful way for the organization and the model to say, who better than our members to be on the board of directors? You know, I mean, that's because, again, I, having learned about this model, certainly in the last month and a half, but knowing of being aware of it for the last few years, I've known it's a different model. But um, that only makes sense that that you uh, would, you know, you and other uh, peers of yours should be involved. You're involved with the decision making. It's your clubhouse, right? It's not Juliet's clubhouse. Juliet's part of it, right? But it's not the board of directors clubhouse, right? It's the membership that's driving it so much. And I'm fired up. And, and what, you know, talking about the writing and the tutoring, what I'm hearing you say is your success empowers other success. Right. And people see what you and you, your words like what Janet's accomplished. And now as a result of that, I can go do this. And isn't that all we're supposed to be doing on this planet with other people is helping other people elevate themselves. And then the ripple effect and the ripple effect and the ripple effect. And it just keeps going back further and further. So I, I can't I mean, we got to take a quick break um, when when we come back, if we'll finish. And then I want I, I want Julia just back to talk about some upcoming events. But I would love to do this again, maybe have just like a Facebook Live where you and maybe some of the other members can come on and just talk to me about your experience from, from a membership perspective. I think that'd be fun. And uh, I, I'd like to do that if you're into it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I'm sure more members would also be very excited to come on and speak of their own clubhouse experience. Yeah, maybe we even do it at Jamaica live. I come out, we bring like a camera and we just do a live from on, on the scene. I think we could work that out. We'll make it happen. That, Janet, thank you for being here. Stick around like where you're seated. We come back. We'll we'll finish with a couple minutes with you, and then we'll bring Juliet back in. How's that sound? Yes. All right, cool. All right, we're right back. Philanthropy and Focus. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector, coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. Hey. 
We're back. Philanthropy and focus. That's the name of the show. My name is Tommy. It isn't Joe. All right. That's that. All right. So, <laughs> Janet, I got uh, I, I want one last thing from you. And I'm going to bring Juliet right back in because I, I've decided I'm going to come out on site. We're going to do something fun. But um, what do you want people to know about uh, Venture House specifically from your perspective as a member? Tell So, you know, we have people who could be donors, people who could, you know, may, may need services. What should they know? We are, we began uh, in, uh, I believe it was the late 80s. I don't have the specific date in my head. And uh, we started out as a, in a small room at the top of the YMCA in Jamaica, Queens, to now having two properties um, uh, in Queens, one in Queens, one in Staten Island. And we are also uh, starting a young adult program in Brooklyn. Oh. So, you know, we are not just recognized within the clubhouse community, but also the city is starting to recognize the wonderful work that we're doing and, uh, you know, helping us to grow because they, you know, they see the value of Venture House and what we all do together. Also, something very interesting that I forgot to mention, um, you know, we have, you know, um, you know, for lack of a better term, like, you know, there's no hierarchy. Yes. Everything is drawn by consensus. So that includes the hiring committee. Members are on the hiring committee. So we also have a say in who we would like to uh, come back for a second interview, who we feel wouldn't be the best fit. Wow. So, you know, and we have several other uh, committees, uh, social committees. But one of the things that I, you know, when I started, I was like, wow, we also have a say in who gets hired. So it's just like we're treated like part of the one, you know, one, like we have value and we're, you know, we're giving responsibility and this is what really raises our um, self-esteem and what says, all right, I'm going to move forward. I can do this. Why, why not me? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, I got a million more questions for you, but we're not going to, we're going to run out of time today. So we're not going to do it today, but I appreciate you. I appreciate your vision. I appreciate your leadership in the organization. Obviously this, this organization makes a lot of sense. The model makes a lot of sense. And I want to schedule some time. I'll work with Liz and Juliet to schedule some time when I can either come out or we just do some kind of Facebook live with you and some of the other members to help tell stories, if that's good with you. That's great. Well, thank you, Tommy. And thank you to all your listeners as well. You got it. I appreciate you, Janet. Roll, roll that way. And then Julia, roll back in. Let's do it. Janet, that was incredible. Thank you. Julia, welcome back to the show. (laughs) Thank you. I love that. That was so fun. Oh my God. Incredible. Incredible. The model works. Obviously this model is working. I love that Janet is on the board of directors. What better way? And the hiring committee, the whole thing. All right. I'm getting all excited. I'm always excited. (laughs) But I'm getting excited about all this, but let's just move up. Tell me about the paintings and stuff behind you. Tell me about March 11th. Tell me about May 6th. We got to get it all in and tell me what else you need. Okay. So, you know, we have a whole, uh, Queens is open 365 days a year. Mm-hmm. It's getting close to that. We're just not open on Sundays yet. Okay. We have a very robust social programming. Um, in addition to the work order day, which is a standard business week, we have, um, we have arts programs, we have a venture house band, we have, um, we, we take trips together, we, we do bowling and billiards and picnics and barbecues and movies. And, you know, so we, we do a lot of fun and games in addition to working. And so we have a lot of extremely talented artists. Uh, one of our policies here is that every piece of work in the building is made by our members. And if the staff wants to contribute something, that's okay too. Uh, but so now we do have an upcoming um, event, the Fountain House, which was the first clubhouse and is still there, has a gallery, an art gallery on 9th Avenue and 48th Street on the corner. And they are lending us their space for a uh, venture house to have an art exhibit, a two week period. So on March 11th, we are, will be having our opening reception. I believe it will be from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., but I might have to get back with you on the exact time. Um, we'll have one of our talented musicians playing during the reception. And then the art will be hanging for a two-week period. And also these pieces will be uh, for sale. So that's just a sampling. You probably can't see it that well. I, I could see that one with those three 
human figures and i want to buy that so we'll have to talk about that if that's for sale because that is an amazing artist he's one of our staten island members i love that i love it so i'll be you know coordinating with you and your team i intend on being there for the opening whatever time of day it is on on march 11th um and let's put some fanfare behind it let's put some uh kind of some chatter out there on the social media um other than that let's talk about the mets real quick so the Mets, uh, we are partnering with the New York Mets on Mental Health Awareness uh, Day, which is um, May 6th. It's a Saturday. Um, a, a couple of our members and staff will be on the field for a few minutes. Um, you'll see our logo. Um, it'll be our 15 minutes of fame. And so it is a fundraiser. We call it a fundraiser. Fundraiser, yes. We're selling tickets to that, and we will, you know, we can provide more detailed information as it comes so yeah so we'll get that out so shout out to social media stuff if you have it off the top of your head where we can see i know you're certainly on facebook i know instagram um facebook, well, facebook um, is venture house because i'm i was looking at it um and then i will make sure to share all this stuff but venture house v-e-n-t-u-r-e-h-o-u-s-e -E -E is how you're going to find this stuff on social media gang if if you can't find it on social media ping me tommyd.nyc on the instagram and i'll sort you out on that piece um what about one last question before we uh before we finish the show here um is there um is there anything specific that you need juliet for yes. the uh, you know we are venture house in a, is in a growth period a, a sort of very rapidly expanding into all of the boroughs um, with our housing program, Janet mentioned that we are in, and the reason for that is that the city and the state have really recognized, and across the country, that the the value of the clubhouse program in solving the problems of homelessness and and uh, you know poverty, lack of housing, we have um, you know people who are living in the shelter system now who come into the clubhouse, right, and make policy with us, yeah. so. Are keeping, we are helping to keep people stable and uh, uh, functional and making real contribution to the environment in which they live. So, and because of that, we are getting additional supports as uh, the clubhouse model is. And uh, we, so right now we are trying to purchase the property on Staten Island. Um, it's a, you know, $2 million. We need to get a mortgage. We need to conduct a capital campaign and raise you know, money we're looking to raise a half a million dollars so we can, you know, go through with this purchase of the, the property, which contains a, um, you know, 7,500 square feet of clubhouse space and, and there's parking and, and a freestanding house on it, which is in our housing program. Um, so we, and we're, we're, that's part of our growth. We also, you know, as a long-term, you know, vision is, is perhaps, you know, to developing um, additional clubhouse locations so here's what i have for you we got to leave it there because we're out of time which just means i promised you two things i said i'd make you laugh today and we'd run out of time before we ran out of words so i think i hit on both so we got to go in a sec but what i want to just say to you is this as you're talking i'm saying we need a clubhouse on long island we need a clubhouse on long island it's all that's going on in my head so you and i need to talk about that on a meeting right and figure out how we do that because i got plenty of connections with nonprofits that serve this community we just need a clubhouse out of here what are you going to say we're looking, we're looking at Hempstead. Oh, I got some friends in that neighborhood. Because the clubhouse, one of the standards speaks yeah. to, the clubhouse has to be accessible to people. Right. So public transportation. Public transportation. Got it. We got the, the old bus terminals and stuff over there too. Yeah. All right. We And you got, you got the Long Island Railroad. All right. Way too much stuff to, 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 to go through right now. You and I have to get back together on this. Janet, if you can still hear me, I think you're still in the room. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate you. We'll see you. We're going to do a lot of cool stuff. I got an idea. I'm going to come on site. We'll have a, we'll have a meeting. Just you and the members and me. None of the staffers. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> look, Janet, Juliet, thank you for being here. For Kenny, Liz, I appreciate you both for making this happen. Brendan Levy, thank you for making this introduction originally. And thanks for all my listeners who are always checking in. Let's go Mets. Philanthropy and Focus. We'll see you later. Bye.